Hey, welcome back. I would like to start this video with a brief anecdote. I was once designing a simple current mirror and thought that it would be best to use as little of the supply voltage as possible. The only way I could figure out to reduce the headroom requirements was to reduce the overdrive voltage of the current mirror transistors. Now, although the size of the current mirror transistors depends on various things such as how much GDS can we tolerate, the matching, the parasitic capacitance added by the current mirror, etc. I thought I would think about all those later and for now let me just choose a large enough length and also a large enough aspect ratio so as to have sufficiently low GDS and overdrive voltage which is VGS minus VT. Feeling cocky about my design, I quickly designed the amplifier and simulated it across corners and temperature to see that it worked as expected. I was quite elated. But that happiness was short-lived until I ran Monte Carlo simulations to check the effect of mismatch. It turns out that to have minimal mismatch in current, we have to not just increase the transistor sizes but also have to ensure that we have an adequate overdrive voltage. In today's video, let's see why this is the case. By the way, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. Let's begin with the simple current mirror topology as shown with an ideal current source of value I. Assume that we want to copy the current I to the transistor M2 and thus design M1 and M2 with the same aspect ratio. Adopting a simplified long channel model, the current I when M1 and M2 operate in saturation is expressed as beta over 2 times W by L times VGS minus VT whole squared, where beta is a process related constant. Now we can have variations in beta as well as VT. In practice, there would be random variations in W and L as well, but let's ignore that for this analysis. From the, temp from the expression of I, we can express delta I as del I over del beta times delta beta plus del I over del Vt times delta Vt. Now del I over del beta is simply this factor which is I over beta. To compute del i over del vt, recognize that mathematically a small change in vt is like a small change in vgs with vt constant and del i over del vgs is gm. So del i over del vt would be minus of gm. This can be obtained even by taking the derivative of i with respect to vt. Now we have an expression for delta i but we are more interested in delta i over i because does a delta i of 1 microamperes affect us if the current is 1 milliamperes? No, but it sure affects us if the current was 1 microampere to begin with. So if we divide the whole expression by i, we get delta i over i equals to delta beta over beta minus 2 by v overdrive times delta vt since gm is 2i by v overdrive. If we assume sigma to be the standard deviation of the relative current distribution, then we can express that using Pelgrom's law as sigma squared equals to a beta square over wl plus 4 by vov squared times avt squared over wl. As expected, the ID mismatch decreases with increasing w and l. Additionally, it also increases as v overdrive decreases. Therefore, to get a good matching in current, we generally don't keep a minimum overdrive voltage at the expense of some voltage headroom. By the way, a salient point is that the standard deviation of delta beta over beta is proportional to 1 by root WL, whereas the standard deviation of only delta Vt, not delta Vt over Vt, is proportional to 1 by root WL. To know more about this, please refer to the classic paper by Dr. Pelgrom titled Matching Properties of MOS Transistors. This was published in IEEE JSSC in the year 1989. Hope you learned something from this video. See you in the next one. Happy learning.